So let me, that's a great uh, lead in to my favorite topic, which is combinations of immunotherapies, which I really think is the future. I could tell a little bit about the, the uh, I could hog up the time with the, uh, the study that we did with ipilimumab and nivolumab, but I'd like to just hear comments from you about where you see combination immune therapies. You're familiar with the, the trials and the other potential combinations. Can you talk a little bit about the data and where, where we might go with that? Well, as you remember, I was the discussant at, uh, at your session, and the data were very <laughs> impressive. Uh, having a 40 to 50 percent response rate with deep responses, um, I think clearly provided clinical benefit with uh, some 80 percent of the patients uh, doing well at two years. I mean, that's a phenomenal uh, set of data in not a tiny number of patients. I mean, we're talking 80 some odd patients. So I think there's going to be great um, hope uh, that combining a PD-1 antibody and ipilimumab uh, will be uh, very beneficial for patients, although you have to balance that against the fact that the rate of dose-limiting toxicity was about as high as the response rate. This is a potential problem. Yeah. Not, 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 a, not completely fair, Jeff, because the, uh, um, w we were involved with that trial, and although there was a high rate of grade 3, 4 adverse events, it was in the range of around 62%. Many of those were manageable, just like ipilimumab toxicities are manageable. So, um, and many of those were laboratory abnormalities, like amylase and lipase. So, the, the toxicity rate is higher. You do get more toxicity, but you get, probably do get a lot more activity for the combination. Let me just ask: um, Are there any combinations out there that you are very excited about in the uh, immunotherapy absolutely. space? Absolutely. Let's go ahead, Omi. So there be uh, at ASCO there was data from TVEC which is an oncolytic virus, and ipilimumab. Very few patients, 18 patients, but a 54% response rate and very low toxicity. That is something that's going on to a randomized clinical trial, and it is very tolerable, easy to give with drugs that uh, physicians can learn to give without difficulty. There are multiple clinical trials now that are looking at uh, PD-1 or PD-L1 in combination. In fact, we have a PD-1 combined with an anti-PD-L1 that's accruing at this point. So the point of toxicity for me is that we have to learn, just like we learned with ipilimumab, how to uh, identify it and how to treat it early. Uh, and the point of combination is that what we have seen now should spur us to push forward. I, I think there does need to be a little bit of caution. I'm very hopeful like you are, Mario, and I have not been involved, at least in the unblinded trials. But there's no question, as Jeff mentioned, that adding ipilimumab to uh, uh, nivolumab it gives you ipilimumab toxicity at least, yeah. and and that that's certainly significant. Um, I think that uh, the response rate, honestly, that and I know you do also. The nivolumab is such an active drug, and so is the MK three four seven five. That 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 it's going to be, as I would say, tough to beat in a randomized trial. However, it very well may. I'm actually quite interested in the question of whether maybe, maybe there are select patients who, who need the combination, who won't respond, uh, thinking primarily of the PD-L1 negative population. And that combination certainly could have a huge effect on that population. And the question, which we'll learn from randomized trials, is whether do those patients who are PDL1 positive, do they get so much more benefit? And those, those can only be answered in, in prospective trials. And hopefully we'll get a hint. I wasn't able to attend your session, so I don't know exactly what you. But the saying. rate of uh, uh, the response rates that have been already published were very similar similar in the PDL one negative and positive populations in the combination trial, right. which I think is very interesting. And again, uh, I That's think you raise an interesting point. Everyone was thinking PDL one positivity should be used to select the PD one patients. Maybe, as you point out, you should use PDL one negativi negativity 
to select the, the combination patients. That's what I Well, I think that's very the, interesting. The, what I've actually proposed is that in doing combinations, that we actually stratify by PDL1 positive sure. versus PDL1 negative because then we set different response rates for each of sure. those groups, and then we have different targets for each of those groups. I think there's a number of incredible combinations coming down the road um, with other checkpoint inhibitors like LAG3 and TIM3, and then very excited about combinations that involve co-stimulatory agents together with PD-1 and PD-01. So the future for immune therapy and melanoma is incredibly bright. Um, I, I